Welcome to Faith Keepers. Today uh, we have a very special guest with us, Issa Ies uh, who's a missionary serving in Guatemala. Uh, Issa Ies, thank you for uh, joining us today on Faith Keepers, and, and welcome. Uh, Issa Ies, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, your ministry in Guatemala. Well, thank you for having me here. Uh, it is a privilege for me to share what God is doing in Guatemala, my country. I'm a native uh, Mayan. Uh, from Guatemala, and I speak the Quiche language. Our tribe is the largest tribe of the Mayan descendants. There are over two million Quiches that are spread in five uh, different provinces. But my country is the size of Tennessee, so you can imagine it's a very small country, and it's a small uh, territory. Uh, but the Lord took me back to Guatemala because Guatemala it's the second largest country in the world, uh, the second country in the world that has been reached with the gospel. South Korea is number one. But if you compare South Korea and Guatemala, there's a difference. And I believe the difference is discipleship. And mm -hmm. that's why I went back to Guatemala with a key purpose, to disciple believers. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. I, we have been serving the Lord, my, my wife and I, uh, for 26 years back as missionaries in Guatemala. Amen. Wow. Well, um, he said, yes, we, we have been studying um, in the book of 2 Timothy, and uh, Paul uh, shares with uh, Timothy. Uh, he calls him a son in the faith. And uh, um, this, this particular verse we're going to uh, unpack today, and it's uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2, the things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Um, ECS, uh, you, you enjoy a very special uh, blessing uh, in that your own son, uh, David, uh, is your son uh, biologically and also he's uh, a son in the faith. And uh, uh, I, I think it would be good for, uh, for, our, for our men to, to hear a little bit about uh, your son David and his work and uh, how, how that's going. Well, yes, it is a special privilege. For me, I can die now knowing that David, my son who... 22 years old, can carry on the ministry. Mm -hmm. But it's not really the ministry, it's the faith. Mm -hmm. He can carry on the faith, he understands. Right now he is studying the Bible. Uh, uh, he's studying uh, in a Christian college, and he says, I'm studying for the ministry. So he's studying the Bible and getting tools there. But the main thing is that my wife was the, really the one who reminded me through the years. She said, your first disciples are Annie and David. Mm. And so that's, and I led David to the Lord. Amen. And then we, we study as he was little, and then we read the Bible together, and then I always talked about, David is an interesting uh, young man now. He's always sensitive, very affectionate, and now, uh, very committed to the word. So um, then when he was probably nine years old, I baptized him. Amen. He asked me, I want you to baptize me. Uh -huh. uh, that's an important thing which not all people can have the opportunity. But I think they'll be, it's, this is an interesting uh, doctrinal thing that the Bible does not say that only the pastor can baptize, the that's deacons, true. the elders. As a matter of fact, Jesus and John says, Jesus never baptized, but right. his disciples. So we have put baptism above discipleship. Mm. But it would be an interesting thing. And some people, in some churches where there's more freedom, sometimes it's the fathers who baptize their own sons or their wow. own children. Yeah. And that really has an impact on the children. But anyways, uh, David has been with me through the main things. You know, I introduced Christ to him, I baptized him, and I studied the Bible with him. And so, yes, we have a special relationship that he is not just my biological son, but also my son in the, in, in the spiritual area. What a blessing. And I, I agree with you about, about baptism. I, I, and, um, you know, it's, it's true, been true in our church as well that, you know, we have, we have delegated that, uh, that responsibility to not just to be the pastor that does mm. the baptizing. That's very good. Others are able to, uh, to baptize. And mm. so, uh, yeah, we... We can enjoy a wonderful blessing. I've been yes. able to baptize all three of my girls, mm -hmm. uh, all three of my daughters. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, 
I share that, uh, yeah, that common experience with you. It has a special impact on the children. Mm, amen. So um, as, as followers of Christ, um, ECS, we have a responsibility to teach others about Jesus. Um, Paul was committed to sharing this, this with Timothy. And uh, Paul got Timothy involved in the mission of sharing Christ and teaching others. How, um, how do you see this, this teaching right here that, that he gave to Timothy of, of passing on um, to faithful men? How do you see this being lived out in Guatemala? Well, I praise the Lord that I went to an institution where I emphasized the word, committed to the word, preached the word. And I was committed to this from the very beginning, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, do this four-generation discipleship process. But also the fact that what I see and what I learn in seminary is that Jesus Christ has a team, mm -hmm. had a team. Mm -hmm. Paul traveled with the team. So I always had the idea, although it was at the beginning it was just my wife and I, we went down to Guatemala with the idea to reproduce ourselves. And uh, I have this thing in my mind that um, saying that I always repeated, uh, God did not take me back to Guatemala to build buildings, mm. but to build lives. Amen. It's much harder, but it's more exciting. That's it takes right. more time, but that's what we do. So uh, from the beginning, we... We, 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 we had the idea of discipling people. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that goes with that is that it's not a one-to-one. -one. I don't see that in the Bible. The only time that Jesus Christ sent twos by twos mm -hmm. is when he sent them to practice a little bit what he has taught them. But it was by two. He was never commissioned just one person. Mm -hmm. it was so, and so I went to Guatemala with the idea to, to do twos. And I started with two. It was Andres and Santos. They were my two first disciples. Then I added later Otto, and there were three of them. And the, the, the dynamics of three, it's different than one-to-one. -one. Right. I, I believe that one-to-one -one is for special times only, mm -hmm. when you pray or they share uh, personal things with you. Mm -hmm. But it's always two or three disciples, and that's what I do, uh, what I did as well from the beginning. That's a great, great example of of using G Jesus' teaching on you know, how uh, there were times when he would address the crowd. Uh, there were also times in which he uh, would pull his disciples for more in-depth teaching. So he would teach the 12. And then uh, uh, when he, you know, there were times also when he would take three, Peter, James, and John, uh, for very special uh, teaching that he wanted to share with them or an experience that he wanted them to see. And, uh, yes. Yeah, I, I agree. And what I try to do is to reproduce what Jesus did Amen. or what the Bible teaches. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who pushes other ways of doing discipleship. But what I have done in Guatemala, with God's help, it's to be biblical. Amen. And that's what we have done. And so um, I have seen this, and it's also uh, exciting to Amen. go with the three people uh, to the mountain, to have coffee, to do things. It's more fun than just two, I yeah. think. It but the dynamics are a little different. Yes. Um, and sometimes it may take a little bit of the pressure off of the guys, too. Uh, yes. To, you know, engage one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes it can be a little intimidating. And it's interesting. If you see a verse, it says, the things which you heard from me in the presence of many witnesses. Mm -hmm. And trust these two faithful men, plural. Mm -hmm. It's not faithful, just one person, uh, who would teach others. Mm -hmm. So the plurality of discipleship is always in this verse. Very well. good point. In the native communities, uh, when a man comes to faith in Christ, he receives Jesus as his Lord and Savior. Sometimes it can be difficult for uh, that man to know what to do next. And uh, as, as we think about this, men can be uh, maybe discouraged, confused, um, you know, sometimes even pulled back altogether. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, are, what are some steps that you take um, with, with a man that comes to faith in Christ. And I think that's a very important, especially for the native, native people. Um, they're learners, they're quieter, they're shyer, and, but discipleship, that's why it's important to have more than one. Mm -hmm. Because from the beginning, he should learn that the spiritual walk 
the spiritual life is not done alone. Mm -hmm. You have to do with others. Amen. And so the first thing is that you start, that's why it's, even that, I never thought about that before, but even that it will help him. Mm -hmm. you know, this is, he's coming to a community, Correct. a community. God always, you know, if you start from the nation, you know, or if you start with Adam and Eve, he said it's not good for man. To be alone. So <laughs> why do we do one-to-one? -one? <laughs> and so from the beginning, God is always plural. Mm. And so that's the first thing that we need to teach him. This is a new beginning. This is a new experience. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have been alone or be alone, but now we want you to show that the spiritual walk, it's done in community. Amen. And, and so that's the first thing we do. The second thing I do is that this is a spiritual warfare walk. That's right. So expect tribulations. And what I have seen, Sean, is that people who accept Christ, they, they have told me, my disciple told me, before I was in this process, everything was going smooth. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm engaged and studying the Bible and praying more, now I see more problem. I have I'm sickness in my life or in my community or my family. Uh, my, I lost my job. Why? It should mm -hmm. be different. And I said, no, no, no. It should not be different. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that through many tribulations we enter the kingdom of God. And so the second thing I teach them from the beginning, this is a struggle. This is a life of struggle. Mm -hmm. But don't be, it, it, don't, don't, don't lose heart. The power in the Holy Spirit, opportunity there to be with you. Amen. God is with you. He will help you. So uh, that's the second thing I teach them, uh, that it's a struggle. And also it's a dependency. It's not independency. Right. And that goes with against the culture of some countries, but uh, dependency. You depend on your brothers uh, for encouragement as well as God. Prayer, you pray a lot. You fellowship with others, and you also, you know, this is, when you do it well, what I have seen with my disciples is that you don't ask them to go witness. They just go witness. They get excited about this. <laughs> Man, this is great. Um, so it's as a result when you do the process well. So those are the things that I do for someone that comes to know Christ. Amen. Amen. So um, for, for the man um, maybe that's just received Christ and maybe feeling some discouragement, um, n just know that there, there are faithful men out there. And uh, there, are, there are men that are willing to, to help you along in your walk in Christ. Um, and so um, I, think, I think that's a very important point. James. Well, the, the, the thing, though, is sometimes actually, Sean, I don't think that the, the churches, the leaders understand this. Mm. Many times, a new believer is discouraged by the leadership of the church mm. because they don't emphasize this type of thing, so they don't pay attention to him. Mm -hmm. They don't, and, and can get discouraged. But as you said, the key is the faithful man. Mm -hmm. Keep looking. Mm -hmm. There must be somebody. Right. Somebody there, they would, would they may be a, a, an older man. Uh, maybe the poorest guy in the congregation. It, it may not. What I'm saying is that many times the leaders are not believing on this process, and so they don't do. And a lot of new believers get discouraged because the leaders do not pay attention to them. Mm. But they're always faithful. That's the key. They're always remember there are faithful people there that God has raised to help you. That's right. Allow them. Amen. Amen. Paul. Uh, Paul charged Timothy uh, with the responsibility of teaching uh, faithful men who would then teach others. There's a, this legacy. Um, mm -hmm. for, for we, you see in this one verse, there's four generations, mm -hmm. Paul to Timothy, Timothy to uh, faithful men, mm -hmm. and then faithful men who would teach others. Mm -hmm. So um, four generations of, of followers of Christ. Um, do, have you seen four generations uh, develop yet in, in, uh, in Guatemala? Not yet. Mm -hmm. um, what I have seen is that churches have born. Unfortunately, when a church is born, there are a lot of things to do. But I keep telling my disciples, really the goal is discipleship and your disciple. So right now I have uh, Alberto, I have Juan, and I have there are three guys, Alberto, Manuel, uh, Manuel and Juan are doing that. Mm -hmm. Alberto, for example, I taught Manuel, Manuel taught Alberto, and now Alberto is teaching others. Amen. 
not doing discipleship yet, but he's already teaching. Mm -hmm. And part of what I tell them is that teaching a course is not discipleship. Many, okay. And this is an important thing, concept that we need to understand. A lot of organizations even publish course on discipleship. And they give you the course. And if you do that course, then they said we have disciples. No. Discipleship is not a course. Discipleship is your life pouring into another life. Yes. You walk with the disciple. Mm -hmm. You cry. You, you pray. You, it's, it's a living experience with your disciple. Like mm -hmm. When that happens, then and it's not happened yet in the fourth generation. Mm -hmm. We're doing the third generation. The third generation are pastoring, are teaching. But the next thing that I need to see it accomplishes that they will disciple the faithful ones. Amen. Amen. But he well, hasn't seen it. We, we live in such an instant society. We want to see results right right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so w what I hear you saying is that it, it takes time. It's, yes. It, there's, a, there's, a, there's a process of, of lifelong learning uh, throughout our life in Christ. Uh, well, God also has uh, an interesting thing because we have to put a limit to that, though. Mm -hmm. We cannot just say it's a long process, it's going forever. No. Again, Jesus Christ, he disciple, uh, his people in two and a half years, mm -hmm. approximately. So if he does it in two and a half years, maybe I should do it in three and a half. Or say it has to be an end to this thing mm -hmm. because you cannot keep the idea of us. We have to do long process, but God is there to help us. Amen. Amen. Well, you see, yes. We, we have shared and covered uh, a lot uh, of uh, our responsibility for uh, making disciples. And uh, um, I, I would uh, like for you to maybe pr uh, pray for our men that may be watching today, uh, encourage them uh, in their walk with uh, the Lord and uh, grow, grow stronger in their, in their faith. And uh, I, I would like to ask if you would, if you would pray in your native language, uh, Kiche. And uh, uh, just pray for pray for our men. And okay. If you would, we'll do that. But before that, I will, I want to talk to you men who are there listening or watching. Uh, don't get discouraged. If you already know Jesus Christ, it's for a purpose. Mm -hmm. God is good, and God will help you. So find a group of people that will pray for you. There are people there who are be willing to help you. Mm -hmm. So let's Amen. pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be part of the process of discipleship. I pray, Lord, that you bless our listeners or viewers with an encouragement that they understand what the process of discipleship is all about. You are great and you are wonderful. You ask us to do things, but you also enable us to do things. So help this man, uh, women, or people that are listening or viewing this to understand that there is not just a, there is a reason why you have brought them to this point. Mm -hmm. And if there are some who are discouraged, I know, Lord, that you, your Holy Spirit is there and provide people to encourage them, provide people to disciple them, or maybe they should turn around and start discipling others because this is really what the gospel is about, that we make disciples for the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So we pray, Lord, that you bless everybody, that you uh, encourage everybody at this moment, and may the glory be for your name and the encouragement be for you people who are in the churches. We thank you for this opportunity to minister to brothers and sisters who are far away but who also are native. God, you are also our Father. You are also our God. And help us to know that we are part of the great nation of yours and your people. Mm -hmm. So we thank you for that opportunity and thank you for this time together. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.